Now our goal is to practice drawing resonance structures, but showing the electron flow. How do we get from one structure to another by connecting the electrons in the molecule? So uh, I'm going to demonstrate this, and this is fairly new to most of you if you've never had organic chemistry before. So one thing to keep in mind is be patient. It's going to require a lot of practice for you to get the intuitive feel that you want to have. Um, and then you also want to consider when there's multiple resonance structures, um, you want to try to think about which one is better than the other. So with benzene, we saw that they're equivalent. Either way you draw it, they're, they're the same energy. But that's not always the case. Sometimes one resonance structure is better than another. So you'll get practice sort of thinking about those things. Now remember, it's just the pi electrons that we moved around. I didn't create any isomers. Isomers that result from moving atoms and breaking bonds and reforming bonds elsewhere. These are actually just the same skeletal structure, but the pi electrons are moving. Okay, so either the double bonds are this way and now they're this way, but see the foundation is still the same. I still have a six-membered ring here. It's just the way that I think of the pi electrons has changed. One way of demonstrating that is to look at the left structure and say, how do I get the electrons in the other orientation? So one way I can do that is to push electrons from where there are lots of electrons or electron-rich areas like pi bonds. They can be broken, in which you'll see an arrow originating from the center of a bond to show that it's breaking, and then moving to the center of another bond to show that the pi bond is moving there. So for example, in a different color, let's do this one at a time, this pi bond here is going to break and form here and thus turn into this pi bond there. Okay, I'm going to take another color and show this pi bond here is going to break because I'm going to start an arrow in the center and move it to there. So here's that pi bond that results from that movement. And then here is the last one, breaking it and forming it there. So here's where that ends up. And then you can do the same thing and go backwards. You can push that back the other way. But remember what I said. It's not that the electrons are swinging back and forth. They're actually spread out, like my butter and toast analogy. So the, arrow, the arrows are really for us to understand how do we get from this structure to that structure and not accidentally add electrons or delete electrons because we have to conserve matter, right? Okay, so a couple of things to remember while we work through these exercises. You only move pi electrons or lone pairs, which can also be part of a pi system. So only move pi electrons or lone pairs. Do not ever move or break sigma bonds, okay? Those are our foundation. You wanna keep the foundation there. Identify good acceptor atoms for lone pairs, um, which are sp or sp2 hybridized, not sp3. Do you know why sp3 doesn't want to take electrons? Uh, what geometry is it? What shape is sp3? sp3 is tetrahedral. That means that the center already has an octet. It's completely full. If you give it more electrons, it's going to have over an octet, and if it's carbon, it doesn't like that. So what you want to do instead is push to sp2 or sp, you know, where you have these pi, um, a potential, these uh, potential for p orbitals to get filled. Okay, so that means if I'm going to fill a p orbital, I can then move the electrons in that orbital to another place further down the chain. Right, but you can't do that when you're already saturated with electrons and there's nowhere for them to go. Okay, you're going to push electrons from negative charge to positive charge. That makes sense. You have a lot of electrons here, so you're going to move them to places where there's less electrons in general. Don't forget formal charges and hydrogens. You're still getting used to knowing where hydrogens are if they're not drawn. So at the beginning, you might want to draw them in. Okay, just so you get, a, you get used to it. And then don't exceed the octet rule for second ele uh, row elements like carbon and nitrogen and oxygen. All right. 
Determine the best resonance structure by minimizing your formal charges. We're always going to assume neutral is better um, or neutral is best. Uh, so we'll practice with that. And then if you have to have charges, you want to try to get the negative charges on the more electronegative atoms and the positive charges on the more electropositive atoms. So that means if your molecule has to have a negative charge just because the whole thing's charged negative, um, put the negative charge on oxygen over carbon because oxygen can is more electronegative. It can handle the, elect, uh, the negative charge better. Ooh, it's a lot of talking. <laughs> Let's try practicing. The first exercise here from Klein's textbook is to practice understanding the arrow notation. We call it pushing electrons with the arrows, with curvy arrows. Okay, so what we're going to do is follow the rules that I just went over. We're going to keep the carbon skeleton. Okay? So there, there are my sigma bonds. And one thing that you might do at the beginning is just to understand why there's a positive charge here. Let's draw our hydrogens in just for practice. Eventually, you want to get to the point where you don't have to do this. Okay, now here, this is a little tricky, right? Because you have a positive charge. You have a carbon with three bonds and no lone pair. Okay, this is why our previous lessons on formal charge are so important. All right, now remember, in a resonance structure, only the pi electrons are moving. All these sigma bonds and hydrogens are going to stay put. So let's draw those in there. H, 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 oops, sorry. Okay, now that we have our foundation, the only thing that we're moving is this Pi, pi bond there. And we're showing the arrow originating from the bond, meaning that the bond is breaking and it's moving toward this sigma bond, which means we're forming the bond there. So I'm moving the bond from here to there. So in our structure, I'm going to have the pi bond on the other side. All right, now there's something called charge conservation. If this whole thing on the left is positive overall, then the whole thing on the right should be positive overall. So look for where your positive charge is. One clue to this is sort of intuitive. If I had electrons and I moved them, that region became more negative. So we're more negative here. And since we were positive before and now we're more negative, we're neutral. And you can just verify carbon makes four bonds. One, two, three, four. We're fine here. But where did that positive charge go? it ended up where you lost electrons. So you move them from here to here. This became more negative. This became more positive. And if you check, you have one, two, three bonds here. So this is going to be positive. And now I have charge conservation. Now you might say, how is this a resonance structure? Isn't this the same thing as that? Actually, not necessarily. If I had an experiment where this carbon, we'll call it carbon number one, was a special kind of carbon, like carbon-14 or, you know, a different isotope, I could actually track it and see that it might be different from this carbon. Okay, so there's that idea. But actually, remember the resonance hybrid? That's saying that the real molecule is some addition of these structures. So it turns out that there's symmetry. And I wouldn't be able to track these carbons because of the symmetry. The actual molecule has a pi bond split between all of these carbons. So it would be one and a half bonds here and one and a half bonds there. So I wouldn't be able to track them, but I can consider these to be theoretically two different structures. So separate these by a double-headed arrow that indicates not a flipping, not an equilibrium, uh, but this indicates a pair of resonance structures two ways of looking at the electron distribution. All right, next problem. So in part B, we're starting with a lone pair. Now remember our rule up here, um, pi electrons are in a bond, like a double bond, a triple bond has pi electrons, or lone pair. Lone pairs can be used 
as pi electrons as well. So to demonstrate that, here's a pair of pi electrons, and we're going to move them to the center of this bond. That means take the electrons and make a bond there. And then break this the pi bond right here and make a lone pair. Give them to this atom on the end as a lone pair. If we wanted to make a bond, it has to be to the center of a sigma bond that's already there. All right, so let's not forget, we're still getting used to this, so let's draw our um, foundation. Okay, so my skeleton is this, and then the lone pair and the pi bond can be moving around. Okay, so they're part of the flow. So I'm going to take this lone pair and I'm going to move it here. So I'm going to have a pi bond there. And that's from these two electrons. They've turned into a pi bond. And now what happens to this pi bond? What do you think we should draw there? Here, we're going to deposit it onto the end as a lone pair. All right, so now we evaluate charges, okay? The charge I have on this carbon on the end is negative, but remember I've moved electrons away from it. So a lone pair is more at that carbon than a double bond or pi bond. And then if you move it some more, okay, you're moving electrons ultimately to the far end. Then this is becoming more positive. So it was negative, more positive, now it's neutral. And then this is getting more electrons surrounding it. So this is considered negative. And if you're not sure, you can double check, draw out your hydrogens. There's three hydrogens here. Or sorry, there's two hydrogens there. Three bonds to carbon, lone pair, that's a negative charge. Okay, so let's not forget, um, these are resonant structures of each other. So we do some brackets and some double-headed arrows. Okay, let's see what's going on here now. Okay, let's first draw our carbon skeleton. What I'm drawing are just the sigma bonds, that's my foundation, but lone pairs and pi bonds can be, be shuffled around. So let's see what's going on here. First arrow is now notice there's a flow. There's neither arrow says start here, start here, right? So notice that it starts here though because this will result in a change here because uh, the reason why you have to do that is um, the octet rule. If you just moved electrons to here, then this carbon would have too many bonds to it. So when you make a bond, usually you gotta break a bond, okay? So I would consider starting here then going to here, then starting here, and then going to there and going to there. So you're sort of thinking about here to here, here to there, all right? So, so I would think about this as uh, here going to here, that's one, and then here going to here, that's two. But it doesn't really matter if you switch that. I just like to think of it in a linear way. All right, so what's going on here is I'm taking this lone pair and I'm going to make a bond here. And that's because it's drawn to the center of that bond. So that bond is gonna end up here. And the lone pair that was there before, that's gonna still be there. Now I'm going to take this pi bond and I'm going to break it because it's from the center of the bond, breaking it to the atom. That means if I'm pointing it at an atom, what happens there? Well, the electrons that were already there, right here, are still there, because I haven't taken them and moved them. I've only taken the pi bond and moved it to the oxygen, which means I've converted them into a lone pair. Let me show that in red. Here's my pi bond, and those two electrons are now a lone pair. So now, I want to evaluate my formal charges. This is neutral, so this is neutral. But notice that these are not neutral, really. Inside, inside the structure of oxygen here, which is actually negative, and this oxygen is actually positive. 
but it's neutral overall. So that's what I meant by conservation. Overall, it's got to be the same. So these are the resonance structures there. Okay, so I want you to practice the rest and see if you can figure it out, but don't forget, lay your foundation down with the sigma bonds and then worry about the pi, pi electrons, how they're going to move. See if you can identify where to start pushing the electrons. Are you making a bond? Are you breaking a bond? Are you turning a bond into a lone pair or are you turning a lone pair into a bond? Those are the kinds of things that the arrows are trying to show you. And uh, go ahead and try these and check your answers in a few minutes.